Rather than just trying something and hoping that it works, sometimes it's nice to actually know what the end result's going to be before you invest your time and effort into it. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Arland Hill and welcome back out to Harvest Hills Ranch. And today we're going to revisit a topic that I talked about earlier this year, which was ripping or renovating our pastures. Now, I decided to shoot this video as a follow-up for a couple of reasons. One is that, as I just alluded to, it makes sense to know, did you get results from something you tried or uh, maybe a new technique that you were looking to implement? Did it actually produce and is it something that you're going to look to, to use again? That probably has more appeal for you that are in the agriculture space such as myself. But what about you that aren't in the agriculture space? Well, this video is going to be for you to see that sometimes this is going to be a bit of a, a debunking of some of the ideas that you hear that when you see equipment and uh, tractors and things of this nature going across the ground and moving equipment through the ground potentially disturbing the soil that there's always a negative impact from that and i think that has to be looked at with what's the end intention and so we're going to look at that today as well Let's get into talking about some of the pros and cons as I've seen here with doing the pasture renovation. Now, just to give some context to what's taken place through the year, through this year, uh, I ripped the pastures back in February and this year has been exceptionally dry for us. And I don't say that to give any kind of excuse one way or the other. I don't even think that's necessary. I'm just giving you context. Uh, but it's been exceptionally dry. We had a very dry winter, which is extremely unusual for Southeast Texas. And we had pr approximately somewhere to two to two and a half months of no rain. Needless to say, thank goodness that we rotationally graze our pastures. Otherwise they would have been beat up pretty bad. So with that in mind, what did I see in terms of one, grass production, which is the reason a lot of individuals would consider ripping a pasture because it should loosen up the soil. It should allow for a better root structure, but that's only going to happen when you have sufficient water. So do I see a big improvement in our grass production? I would say minimally, and I would say it's not consistent everywhere. For example, this area that you see right here behind me or around me, this was one of the areas that I decided to rip and to pasture renovate, if you will. And I would say that minimally, it did produce better grass. It, is it great? No. Is it a significant change? Is it changing my herd in any way? Probably not. Uh, but I will say too, that I have, in talking with other ranchers and looking at this process, I've had a bit of a change in view on this is that this should not be looked at as something that is going to, with one effort, you should expect dramatic change from this. And that's pretty reasonable given the amount of square footage that that ripper can go through with each pass. You're only getting a small percentage of pasture with each pass. And so this is probably more of a multi-year process versus something that you should look at doing one time and expecting dramatic results from it. Uh, I would also say just in terms of thinking finances, that had an impact to play on whether I bought a ripper or whether I had someone come in and do the ripping process for me. Uh, when I had this quoted, it was $75 an hour and it was only for just this paddock that you see, which is about five acres here. And that was what was gonna take place. They were gonna charge me $75 and it was gonna be about a four hour process, four to five hour process. And it just, I started doing the math on it on the areas that I needed to renovate. It made more sense to buy a, 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 a renovator myself and do it year over year. That I would say is a pro. Let me show you what I would consider another pro with this. And you'll notice that I've got these uh, step-in posts and I've got two types of step-in posts here. I've got a uh, two-prong step-in post and these are single-prong step-in posts. And the reason I decided to show you this because to me, this has probably been the best reason for me personally to have ripped the pastures. And here's what I mean by that. This area that you see right here, that I'm standing on was very hard to step either one of these types of posts into. The area just to my left here was also difficult to, to step these posts into and actually probably a bit more difficult than even where I'm standing, which made running lines to set up paddocks for cows a bit difficult at times too, because especially when the ground was hard, we hadn't had any rain. Like I said, 
two, two and a half months, you haven't had any rain, it made getting posts in the ground really difficult. And it, the, the moisture, we've had some rain uh, in the last month, not a significant amount, maybe three, four inches max. Uh, so again, not a significant amount, but here's where the ripping has really helped out. So where, I, where this post, this uh, single prong post is at right now, this is one of the areas where one of the shanks on the ripper went through. And so if I step this in, I can get that in pretty easy. If I come right here, this would be where another shank went through. You can see where the grass or where the uh, dirt is pulled up under the grass. If I go in here, not great, but I can easily get that down. And that's going to certainly be stable enough, especially when it's ran as a line to keep the cows in, in place. They're not gonna push through that. But now let's look in between these where the ground wasn't ripped at. And you can see immediately that post started to bend when I put pressure on it. So could I get this in? Yeah, I can get that in, but it's more difficult. And if I come just over here, let's just try it. I don't know what it's gonna do. I mean, you can see, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna push that in the ground. It's gonna take me hitting it pretty hard. I don't like doing that to the post. I don't wanna run the risk of breaking these posts. That has happened, but again, you come back into an area of one of these lines that was ripped and you can see with just a little bit of light pressure, it goes in. To me, that has been the absolute biggest benefit in this whole process. And it, may, it has made running lines so much easier. Now, in this area just to the left over here, as I mentioned, uh, we, I renovated this area too, renovated actually more area on, on that side of the fence than I did currently where I'm standing at. And it, you can even still see the lines in where the shanks pulled through the pasture at. And with that in mind, is it, you go, you go back and look at this, is it going to make a difference in one year? No, just because the grass hasn't changed that much over there. Granted, I just flail mowed that, flail mowed that yesterday. So to reset the grass so we can start stockpiling for winter, for the cooler season, but it just didn't make a lot of difference over there. So you know, a multi-year process is really what that amounts to. Now, with that in mind, those are the pros. <clears throat> but there must also be some cons in this too, and indeed there are. And the biggest con that I can take away from this process is that, especially when you're dealing in hard soil, if you've got any clay soil or uh, where it's a mix of sand and clay, you're gonna find that the harder that soil is, when that shank goes through, it's going to create a ridge in there. So as the shank pulls through, it creates a small ridge. If you're driving routinely across that, if you've had a relatively flat pasture that you're going across, you're gonna find that you're gonna be, like when we go across that with the, with the gator, with the UTV, it's a rough ride now. So it is going to make some areas of the pasture rougher. And for all of these areas, that I ripped, I did come behind that and pull a chain harrow over that to, to break up any clods, try to knock some of these things down. As the cows have moved across, across this uh, over the course of the, the warmer season here, they have taken that down a bit, but you can still feel it. I actually find myself, instead of driving across those now, driving in line with them. So it's an easy thing to get around. It shouldn't be a big deterrent, but just something to be aware of there. So what's the takeaway from all of this? Yes, do we rip? No, do we not rip? I actually think that this is something that is worth looking at. Do I think it should apply to every area of every pasture? No, I don't. It's not something that I'm going to do in every area uh, that we have. Our areas that are more sandy, where the soil is looser, where we have good growth. I just don't see the point in, in doing it. Uh, but these areas that are rougher, it clearly does loosen up the soil. And it's been, we're in mid-September right now. And I did this, as I said, in late February. So you figure we're somewhere around six, seven month range as to when we've, as to how long this has been done. And we can still drive these posts in the ground easy. So that ground where the shank went through hasn't hardened back up yet. 
uh, will it over time? Well, hopefully if those roots can, we can get some water, we can get these roots growing and we infiltrate those areas of the soil. Hopefully that ground won't harden back up, at least not until those roots have uh, had a chance to take hold and change the environment around where those shanks went through and ultimately give us good, better grass growth long-term. So, you know, this is really a decision that you need to make, but I wanted to uh, do this as a follow-up. In fact, someone uh, mentioned that they only subscribe to our YouTube channel because they wanted to see a follow-up to the ripping video. So for that individual, this video is for you. So uh, anyway, guys, thanks for joining us. Thanks for taking a look at what the process looked like. Hopefully this information has been helpful for you. Make sure you come back again, see what we're doing out here at Harvest Seals Ranch and what I'm doing in terms of taking the philosophies that we apply here at the ranch and how we're translating this into human health as well. Uh, you can find out more about what we do on the human health side at drarlandhill.com. And if you want to know more about what's going on at Harvest Hills Ranch, what we produce out here, you can go to harvesthillsranch.com. Until next time, we'll see you soon.